Hi there, I'm Kaylin from kaylinbrook.com and today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite topics ever, planning systems. So I'm gonna go through in this video the five tools that I use to stay on top of everything I do. Now five tools might sound a little excessive because most videos focus on just one digital tool or one planner setup, but I'm gonna show you how I use all of these together, the digital and the analog model into like a hybrid planning system, and maybe you'll be even inspired to try something new based on the tools that I share. The first tool I use is Google Calendar. I mean, who has not heard of Google Calendar? It is my life when it comes to future planning and also time blocking, which is my favorite productivity method ever. And I will leave a link to a workshop that I have on time blocking if you're interested in hearing more about that. But when you look into my Google Calendar, you will see that I have all my events in there. I also use it for time blocking different sections of my life to where this part is a more deep work block where I've got to really focus on a writing project or something like that. Then I've got office hours, which are more administrative tasks. And then I also block out things like home projects or maybe a course that I'm working through. And I want to make sure that I have time to do that. I also use the reminder function quite a bit. So if there's something going on that I need to do something for in a few weeks, like maybe I started a Disney Plus subscription and it was like a 30 day free trial and I don't wanna keep it long term. So I set a reminder to say, I need to cancel on this date my Disney Plus subscription. The one thing that I do not like for Google Calendar, and which is why I use some other tools to focus on this part, is tasks. I just feel like the task function is super clunky, and also if I'm looking at the monthly view of my Google Calendar as opposed to the week or daily view, it just really clutters everything up. So I stay away from that function. The last thing I'll mention about Google Calendar, which you probably already know, is that it syncs seamlessly between your phone and your computer. So anytime I'm on the go, running out the door, and I need to check my calendar, I can just open it up on my phone. I also use the Google Calendar widget right on my home screen, which tells me exactly what I have coming up on that day. Now, before I move from that big picture planning of Google Calendar into a more weekly view of planning my different tasks, I wanna insert goal planning in here because I think it's so important to mention that the reason why people struggle to meet their goals is they don't find a process or a way to integrate the steps of that goal into their weekly and daily task systems. And so that is why I use a goal planner. Now the planner that I use is the six week sprint goal planner. And I love this method because it's not so long, like months down the road when you set yearly goals and you lose your motivation, the longer it takes to try to get there. It's also not too short, like a month. Six weeks is just the perfect sweet spot to reach a goal. Now I recently did a Etsy shop. I built an Etsy shop using this method. So beginning to end in six weeks, I'll leave a blog post below if you're interested in that, like learning how I did a case study using this planner. I'll also leave a link to the planner. But what I want to mention here is that anytime you have a goal, there is a week by week breakdown that you have to do in this planner. And then you have to migrate those tasks from the week by week on here into some sort of planning system that you use so that they get done. Now I use Notion, which is what I'm going to talk about next when I'm planning my weekly tasks. In Notion, I focus on project planning, content planning for my business, and then also weekly planning. I'll kind of break down how I do this. So the first thing you're gonna see here is my personal dashboard. So I've got my routines on here, I've got some pages regarding my home, books, personal life that I reference. And then on the right side, you will see a list of a couple projects. So projects are anything where there is more than one task to complete. And I just find it's really helpful in Notion to kind of break those projects down. And also I collaborate a lot with my team on projects, so it makes sense to have them in a digital tool. When you kind of scroll down the page, we'll actually go all the way to the very bottom. You will see my content calendar here. So these are all my emails that I need to write, blog posts that I'm working on, and also Instagram posts. They're all here. They're all connected to different Notion pages that my team can also access so that we can work on knowing what we're creating next for the business. When you scroll back up a little bit, you are going to see a weekly task section broken down into things I need to do for work that week and also things that I need to do for my home slash personal life. And then there's a little recurring task section at the bottom here 
But the reason why I keep my weekly tasks in Notion rather than in my actual paper planner, which I will get to next, is because it's out of pure laziness, honestly, because I did not want to keep writing tasks from week to week if I didn't complete them. And so in Notion, I can just check off the task when I'm done, delete it, replace it on the next week. I really don't have to keep rewriting and rewriting in my paper planner. So that's why I have them in here. I also like adding a little diamond emoji just for fun, but it shows me these tasks are your like, top priorities this week. You have to get these done. The other tasks, Great if you have time, but definitely get the ones with the diamond done first. Everything that feeds into the weekly task section, I've already talked about before. We've got the Google Calendar, so I need to look and see in my bird's eye view planning of what birthdays are coming up. Do I need to buy a birthday gift for anyone? Are there any events that I need to do something for? My goal planner, what weeks on my six week sprint have to be done this week? They go into that weekly task section. Any projects that I'm working on, what can I pull from that project to do this week? What do I need to work on content wise on the blog? or writing an Instagram post, or drafting my weekly email. This all gets dumped into my weekly tasks on Sunday, cross things off, delete them when they're done, and then start all over again on the next Sunday when I sit down to do my planning. Everything on the weekly task list is what I reference when I open up my Disbound Planner to see what I need to do that day. So we're funneling from super big picture ideas into what do I have to do today. I know I keep referencing my Disbound notebook and this is the section where we finally get to open it up and see what's inside. So when I do my daily planning, I like to write my to-do list the night before, I just get stuff out of my brain and then I wake up in the morning and I know exactly what I have to do. So every evening I reference my Google Calendar and see what events do I have going on today, write those down if I have any. Then I reference my weekly task list in Notion and say, okay, what of these tasks do I wanna do today. I really prefer day-to-day -day planning in my Disbound rather than spreading out all the tasks I have to do that week across the week because otherwise I just use an excessive amount of whiteout trying to replan my days. Maybe a task took longer than I thought it would or I, I wanted to tackle it on this day and not that day. It just gets all messed up. So just the night before I only plan the next day's tasks only focus on what do I do this day, gives me so much flexibility because at the end of the day, if I didn't finish everything on my list, I can just migrate it over to the next day and add any tasks that I need to from my weekly task list as needed. My Dispo notebook also holds a lot of other lists and notes. For instance, my national park bucket list, which is what I'm working towards now that we're traveling in the RV. I also, depending on when you're watching this, the holidays are coming up. So I've got my Thanksgiving meal plan, a holiday baking list. I just love keeping these inserts in my Dispo notebook. And if you're interested in the way these inserts are designed, I have awesome news for you. I have a printable planning library full of almost 200 of these inserts inserts that you can check out if you are interested in. I will leave a link to all the membership options below. Lastly, I am a huge fan of brain dumps, mind purges, brain drains, whatever you want to call it. I think everyone should just have one notebook that they use to just pour all of their thoughts in to get it out of their head and onto paper. A lot of times I think we just get super overwhelmed because we're trying to carry so much information in our heads at one time. So I just brain dump on a regular basis. Sometimes I will flesh out blog posts or newsletters that I want to write or maybe a future project that I'm interested in tackling. What I will do is do it in this notebook so it doesn't clutter up any of my other tools. And then when I'm ready to transfer that information after I've gotten it out, I'm ready to organize it, I will put it into the proper tool, whether that's a digital system like Notion or if it's in my Disbound notebook. These are the planning tools that I use to plan productive days, and I hope they've given you some ideas to upgrade your own planner setup. Remember, what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. That's why we're always experimenting. View this as trial and error instead of getting frustrated that something's not working quite right. That's also why I'm a huge fan of customizing systems yourself. So I feel like Notion does this in the digital realm just the same way Disbound notebook planning with planner inserts like the ones I have from the Brainbook Library com they really help you create a custom system just for you rather than just going out and buying a pre-made planner but either way 
who cares if you ditch your planner halfway through the year and go to digital and then jump back to paper again. I think if you've watched this far, you're probably like me and we always get a thrill out of trying some new planning tool. I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for watching. Give this a thumbs up, subscribe if you're on YouTube, follow if you're on Instagram, and I will talk to you later. Bye.